uh, attempt to try our hand at a little MIG welding. Let me. Uh, this, of course, is called the MIG gun. My machine is a Millermatic 250. It's an older machine. Uh, it's, MIG is not a super difficult process, although when you deal with the perspective of pipe welding, uh, there are some touchy areas with MIG. Now, I've got the still working on 4 inch coupon material. I've got it in the angle, the brace, where I can fit it up real easy. And what we have here is the MIG gun. If you were to take this apart, it's very simple uh, internals to it. Uh, this heavy hose goes back to your machine. It's got a gas line as well as uh, the gas line actually is uh, surrounded the filler rod. I don't even have it on. The filler rod, this little uh, the little wire sticking out right there, if you can see that up against my finger. Uh, I'm using 035, which is a millimeter rated size on your, your rod, at your wire. They make different sizes, make different uh, type of guns. There's a whole world of MIG welding all on its own. But for what we're going to do, this is the, this is called the nozzle. This is kind of the cup or the nozzle. This is the tip. These components are made out of uh, brass. This is a tip. This is actually the gas nozzle or what would be your gas lens. Uh, it's not like uh, the TIG that I showed you before. Uh, and there are some TIG gas lenses that are like this. They just have a port with no screen. And this thing back here is the insulator. This is a threaded barrel and it's got uh, wire that is resting in a groove, a three part groove. Down and this thing. thing is right in this area, say like around oh, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Just right in, that's the optimal area to weld with MIG. You don't really want it on the top, you don't really want it directly on the side. And the reason for that is, if you get it on the top, it has a tendency to want to hang and drop in on you, leaving too much penetration, excess bead on your material. You don't want it on the side because by the time you deposit your metal, it wants to sag on you, therefore choking out what you're trying to put in. A lot of times you won't get good penetration. So the optimal spot is really, say, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, right in there. And so what you would do is the machine would roll this away from you while you just keep your rig right in that optimal welding zone. So you want a, a, about a one eighth inch gap is what I like. Uh, depending on how you like to weld, you may go a little bigger and, and turn your heat down a little bit or you may go a little tighter and crank your heat up. But really, a MIG process likes to be set at certain temperatures for certain performance. It's not like a stick where you can crank it down just a couple amps because you've got wire speed and voltage at the same time. You've got two applications coming into one and from what I found with welding on MIG is, is that the machine for optimal welding and there's a certain sound you can tell that it's running good. It looks a certain way. Uh, the machine likes to be set at certain parameters and if you ever buy a machine or you can get a pamphlet or go online, I don't have this in my course, but you can go online or call a manufacturer and say, hey, what's the optimal setting for uh, 035 previously deposit, deposited, you have to thin out your weld so you can get a tie-in. Now I can look through the interior of my piece because it's a short piece, but if you had a big old long section of pipe or something where you couldn't really look through there uh, and you can't weld it from the inside naturally especially if it's a test piece you have to rely on this window in here to look through and see what kind of root you're putting in uh, so you would leave just a little opening at some point where you could see just about all the configuration of the interior part of the weld before you close up your window and then when you close your window up you just really have to make sure that you 
feel like the penetration was made. So if you'll thin your tack out, the last two spots where you're going to weld, you, you'll more than likely succeed in what you're attempting to do. But if you don't, uh, you you won't know unless they shoot it or you know someone somehow with a mirror if they can extend it in there and look and you'll have to start grinding on it cutting it out and that's when you open up your okay. material. Okay. Now as I come down, I really don't know if you can see it or not, but as I've come down, okay now I stop because I don't want to try and make my tie in on sure the side. Everything is going good. Now I'm kind of concerned about that area just off my tack. Let me hit that with a grinder. I didn't like the way that was kicking on me. Reposition and make some soapstone marks so I know where the film is, and we'll just go from there. Here we go.